Thank you, Johnny. Hello there, Dominic Diamond there, welcoming you to the latest instalment of the huge, sprawling, epic weepy that is fantasy football. And it really is a too hanky job today because the cast includes Tony Followell as the producer, Rick Johansson as the man who will be getting no sleep for the next two years. More about that later. And Daniel Kelly as the editor of the greatest music magazine, Bar Lucan, and the supporter of the greatest football team in the Premiership, Bar the 20 odd clubs that are above Tottenham. We'll be whooping it up as only we can in a few minutes. You can book that call now on 034. 0345-909-693 0345-909-693 the nation rejoiced yesterday as a Man United player was sent off for the first time in modern history. Should Schmeichel have gone? Is it tragic that he'll miss the League Cup final? And will Alex Ferguson ever accept a decision that goes against him? Alex said yesterday the referee will be embarrassed about his performance. But is it Alex that should be embarrassed about he and his team's petulant performance? Give us a call now, 0345 909 693. Let's hear your views on the midweek internationals. A sterling performance from Terry Daly's New England team. But should Gascoigne have played? Was he fit, overweight or simply fat? Should Letizia have been given more of a chance? And how many games in a row has Paul Ince taken a shot from 30 yards out knowing that he's never going to score from there? I know there's a lot of averages, but I think there's a bunch of monkeys locked in a room who'll write the works of Shakespeare before Ince does the business from outside the box. And Wales, will gigs make the difference? Or is Jorath trying to make mountains out of molehills? If you have any views on this or any badly mixed metaphors of your own, call us 0345 909 693 now. Now, any Fantasy 11's best and worst Fantasy League buys gladly received and at 10 to 1 will have Scotch Corner, the little bit of Fantasy land that is forever cold and raining. And with the old firm game around the corner, is it fair that Celtic fans are banned from Ibrox? As well as this, comments on the refereeing at the Airdrie Dundee United game and the fact that four of the old directors are still on the Celtic board. Are we celebrating too prematurely? Scotch Corner coming up at about... 10 to 1. All of this plus Arsenal Corner, fans in focus 10 to 12, sorry, not 10 to 1. All of this plus Arsenal Corner, fans in focus the dodgy football record, plus an exclusive new item this week, the amazing adventures of Alan Hansen coming up on the show today. Fantasy Football League Hello, first of all, to Rick Johansson, and congratulations, Rick. Thank you very much, sir. On the birth of the wee lad. What's he called? He's called Ari. After? Ari Han, the legendary Dutch footballer. And I have a photo of him here, actually. He does look a bit like Ari Han, actually. You know I think, Danny? Mm. Yeah, well, I think I think the weighing scales looks more like Ariane actually. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I know that the um, newborns now. I, I know that the good news is as well, Rick, is that so he's what a week old now. Uh, yes, just over. Yes. So good news for Danny is in about four weeks' time we'll be able to play for Tottenham. Absolutely right. I think he'll be out injured within two weeks of that. So. <laughs> I think the Ari Han appeals to people like yourself because if you remember, Ari Han was the manager of Standard Liège. That's until, right. Until um, need I say more? <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Danny? Fine, fantastic. You? Good, good. What is happening? At Tottenham. Why can't the players stay on the pitch? I don't know. If only I knew. What I, 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 I'm more interested now in what's going on off the pitch. Um, they apparently have, have really bid £4 million pounds for Chris Sutton. Yep. I see in the papers they've also bid £2 million pounds for Dean Holdsworth. How does this make Ronnie Rosenthal feel? He's the only <laughs> fit forward in the club. He's the only fit forward in the club and they're now going out and bidding millions of pounds a day <laughs> to, 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 to replace him. It's not and, good for his morale, is it? And even worse than that, he's in my fantasy football side, <laughs> Ronnie Rosenthal as well. well okay. <laughs> right, let's go to the lines now. We've got John from Manchester. Hello, Dominic. Hi, John. How are you? Yeah, I'm a United fan as well from Manchester. So, what did you what did you think yesterday about Schmeichel being sent off? At first, I thought he shouldn't have been. Sent, what walking out the TV last night? I don't think he should. I don't think he should get suspended. What just sending that should be good enough for him. That should be good enough for him because it, it looked it looked worse than the last night where I seen it. But the thing is, I mean, but that's the whole point of being sent off is, you, you know, it's the ultimate sort of punishment, so you have to get the suspensions as well. It's just unfortunate for Schmeichel that it comes at this time. Yeah, it the referee, though, yesterday, he spoiled the game anyway. Because, you know, talking about referees, he, he was a joke yesterday. That's why he's embarrassed, because his referee was a complete joke. He spoiled the game from start to finish. But, and you're not biased at all, John? <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, Chatter Ch 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 Flay were pretty... They, they were pretty dirty as well yesterday, though. They got away with everything. Yeah, what? No we got a nice picture here on the front cover of the Sunday Telegraph, John, uh, oh, yeah. of their sports section of the referee brandishing the red card as Michael yeah. stomping off. Marvellous, we've got it stuck up here on the wall. Can't imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a little gold tinsel. We've got yeah. gold tinsel around and it as well. And a little spotlight on it, yeah. It's like a shrine, I'd say. <laughs> well, the thing is, I, remember, I mean, I, I think Michael should have gone off. I just think he should have gone off because, I mean, this is the greatest, you know, without doubt, the greatest goalkeeper in the world. I, I just thought, what is he doing? 
I thought it was so. He's got Steve Bruce and Paul Parker, two of the best defenders in the Premiership. You know, coming down on the Charlton guy, and he and he comes and runs right out and gets it. And I was thinking it was just so unnecessary. Don't that, it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have know a keeper who got sent as well after 19 seconds yesterday? The crew goalkeeper. After 19, 19 seconds. seconds? Yeah. The world record. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, the way Manchester United played when they got down to 10 men, maybe referees will try it over the week, remaining weeks of the season to make it more competitive by sending off two, three, and ultimately four Manchester United players. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the thing, you know what I mean? You had 10 you players. Know, fun, you? <laughs> but that's the thing, even with 10 players, you know what I mean? You'll still beat everyone. So. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe the, the opposition team should be, uh, should be allowed to pick which Manchester United player gets sent off <laughs> early on. So just to try and make a game of it. <laughs> 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 All right, thanks very much for your call, John. Let's go to Tony from London. He's also got a view about the sending off. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, say I think it was disgusting that uh, he, he got sent off. I mean, why should a great club like Manchester United be subject to the same laws as Manchester <laughs> footballers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I suspect there's a hint of sarcasm in what you're saying. You might be <laughs> right there, yes. <laughs> uh, I think it just goes to prove that ever since Matt Busby's days, they've been a bunch of cynical whingers and they c will continue to be so. <laughs> they put think as that much the effort into the, their football as they've done over <laughs> trying to referee the game over the last 20 years. They've been league champions every year. I think the thing is Dominic Diamond's uh, programme now, you see, this programme is joining Jimmy Hill, Alan Hansen and the rest of in the uh, great BBC conspiracy against <laughs> Manchester United. I know, yeah. it, it, it's a terrible thing, isn't it? It is I mean, terrible. Poor, poor darlings. Mm. It is interesting uh, that as, uh, to, to note that as Manchester United have replaced Liverpool as the obvious power in the land, mm. they've also taken up their particular moaning about referees cloak that, yeah. that the, the best right. teams were and in, in Paul Ince and, 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 and Roy Keane they really do have the classic pair of no matter what part of the pitch the referee makes a decision one of them is there within ten <laughs> oh a tenth of a second yeah. faster oh, than Colin Jackson it, though, have a right go <laughs> they've always had it though Robson and Whiteside they're all the same it's yeah. it, different though Liverpool used to complain about the grass on the pitch and the ball being soft didn't they <laughs> now Manchester United have got the referees are embarrassing is the line <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right yeah. yeah I'm sure it, the referee really lost a lot of sleep last it's night worth too that the referees uh, in the FA Cup have been wearing Manchester United's away kit <laughs> <laughs> just to make sure that, that the bias is kept in place. That's right, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm sure that um, uh, the, the, the football journalists and uh, you, you yourselves really have got it in for Manchester United. That's right, yeah. Yes, absolutely. I, well, I think is I don't actually. I think it's great to see Man United do more. They've got a Sc they've got a Scottish manager. They've got one of the greatest ex Celtic players ever, in Brian McClare. And mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's good because I'm very much a neutral down here, and I think I've got no, no. I think I think I think he's right. The way that the way the press have attacked Manchester, United, I keep on saying they're the best team for 20 years. How mm. can they stand that kind of criticism? <laughs> yeah, it's terrible, <laughs> isn't it? But well, we've got we've got an interesting theory actually about the um, about the whole Man United win. And this was a letter from Michael Deneen from Salford. Um, he has a point about the, the Norwich fan who had a slight disagreement uh, a couple of weeks ago, but I think we've, um, we've sort of dealt with that, so that's okay. But um, he's, he's a Man United fan, and he said he'd like to defend his team from the accusations of whinging. He says, the reason Mr Ferguson is constantly pictured scowling is that he's auditioning for a future episode of Taggart, where Taggart meets his long-lost twin brother. As for the players, the reason Inskeen, Palliston and Schmeichel are continually seen bickering is that they've all put each other in their fantasy football teams <laughs> and are desperate to keep a clean sheet. That's uh, so my Michael Denise dice for that. Right, let's go to Tony again on the sending off. No, no, it's Peter. Sorry, Peter, not Tony. Hello, Peter. Hello, Dominic. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Yeah. Good, good. What's your opinion on this on the Schmeichel affair? I, I think it's disgraceful that, that Ferguson should complain. He should shut up. He, he's such a miserable sod, right? I mean, his team, <laughs> are doing, his team are doing really well in all the competitions. They've had a good win. Yeah. And he should just accept that. I mean, it was obvious that it was going in, and Schmeichel stopped, stopped doing his end. So. But it, this, this is the other part. I mean, I thought there was this thing which was you couldn't actually complain in print or on television about referees if you were a manager or a player and I thought you'd get fined for stuff yeah, like that. When it comes to George Graham or Alex Ferguson it's an exception isn't it? It must be a law for English managers only. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to oh, avoid that thing that it's just the Scottish <laughs> managers that are whinging. Well, it's very hard to avoid it, isn't it? <laughs> because oh, there's only, only Scottish managers in the Premier League now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh, All the successful teams have got Scottish managers. There's something in there. Apart there? from Swindon. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic? Yeah. yeah. I've got some, um, some more stuff here. I've got the Michael Barrymore show. That's the Swindon Town Defence because they're like a comedy act, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Baywatch, that's Man United because they're a bunch of tarts. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> and uh, don't forget your teeth brush for that bloke who played in the 66 World Cup winning team without any teeth. What was his Lobby name? Styles. Lobby Styles. Lobby Styles, that's it. Um, I've got a joke as well, if you want to hear it. You've got what, sorry? I've got a joke. Oh, how good. It's um, um, Alex Ferguson. He, cut, he woke up one day and found like a, a hairy bump on the, on the side of his head. <laughs> and he, he left it alone. He went to the match. He got home and it was growing and growing. So he got his wife to call the doctor and the doctor came along and... He goes, okay, just take one of these. And so he, um, he takes one of these um, 
tablets and a couple of weeks later it's developed into like like a growth like a monkey and it's living and it's breathing and it's on the side of his head and she goes back to the doctor and goes doctor you really have got to help me he goes well how did it all start and the monkey turned around and said well it all started with a big boil on my bum oh i could oh, see that dear. one coming i think about five minutes ago i like the notion that alex ferguson is such a dictator that he can't even ring doctor he has to get his wife to ring the doctor <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, for Thanks very much for that, Peter. Okay, right. It's time for the latest rules and news from the Fantasy Football League, starting off with the man himself, James Alexander Gordon. Fantasy Football League scoring rules. Whenever a goal is scored, the scorer earns his fantasy manager three points. The last player to pass the ball to the scorer gets two points for the assist. The defenders and goalkeeper who concede the goal reward their manager with one point taken off. But if the defence keeps a clean sheet for their teams, it's four points per player. The Fantasy League headlines for the Radio 5 Fantasy League today, the 13th of March 1994. After taking over the top a couple of weeks ago, comedian Nick Hancock rapidly becoming as popular as Man United with the rest of us, his side have soared in confidence. Yesterday, Terry Conroy's legs had the sort of day the rest of the league can only dream about. With just five games played, the legs picked up a staggering 23 points. Two goals from Robert Lee, two goals from Evan Okoku, three assists from Andy Cole, an assist from Letizia, and a clean sheet from Marshall. What can you say? Uh, sack him. <laughs> um, among the lesser mortals in the league, Pat Nevin's side, the outsiders, were the only real performers. Two goals from Beardsley, a goal from Barker, and a clean sheet from Hans Segers did the trick for Pat, who's now pushing third spot. But talking about Nick Hancock's side, Terry Conroy's legs, after we announced that he had won his semi-final in the Fantasy League Cup the other week, we had a bit of a dispute in the pub after the show, and there were some discrepancies were unveiled about Nick's team selection and uh, there was a, basically a difference between the team that Nick claimed he'd picked and the team that Fantasy League headquarters said he'd picked. So as a result, we have a revised Fantasy Cup result. It means that Matt Miles Skunk City has 16 points and Nick Hancock's Terry Conroy's legs have 15. There is going to be a full FA inquiry into this. There's been accusations of bungs, of roadside meetings, of everything like that. Nick Hancock's days might be numbered. It does make you question his rise up the league. In terms of transfer news, both my team, God bless Lou McCarry and Tommy Docks, there was in the tug of war for Nathan Blake. If Tommy Doherty is listening, if you could give us a phone today, we could try and resolve that one on the air. If you want to set up your own Fantasy League, the number to call is 081 340 8413. The address Fantasy League Limited, PO Box 1977, London N64 NQ. The revised draw then for the semi finals of the Fantasy League Cup on Radio 5. Dogs Devils against Cram's Crusaders and Osgood is good against Skunk City. The semi finals will be played over the weekend of the 19th, 20th, and 21st of March, with the finalists being announced on the programme on the 27th of March. The finals themselves will be played over the Easter Bank holiday weekend, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th of April, and we'll have a presentation of the trophy to the winning manager on the programme of the 10th of April. Fantasy Football League. Tony from Essex is on the line. Hello there. Hi Tony, how's things with you? Okay, not so bad. Good. What uh, have you got? I've got a team of footballers in TV and film. Uh huh, let's hear it. Okay. Uh, in goal, uh, Brian Gunn as Max Wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jan Mulby as Billy Bunter. Uh huh. Terry Phelan as Huckleberry Hound. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, yep. Davy Dodds as the Elephant Man. Yes, definitely. Yep. Uh, Martin Keown as E.T. Uh. <laughs> and uh, I've got a footballer from the early 80s and late 70s. Mm -hmm. Eric Gates as Cat Weasel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Gaza as Rapsi Nesbitt. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, Peter Beard's the uh, obvious Rab one. Rapsi Nesbitt's got slightly more sartorial elegance though than Gaza. That's yeah. Good. And you know, the obvious so one, Peter Beardsley as Quas Quasimodo. Yeah, oh, that's nice. <laughs> um, Mick Quinn as Bob Carroll G's, which yep. bit the dog. <laughs> he does look like Bob Carroll doesn't mm -hmm. he? That's quite good. <laughs> yep. Uh, George Best as Oliver Reed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Perry Groves as Tintin. Yep. And uh, I've got a couple of subs. Uh huh. Uh, Dennis Wise as Just William. Yep. Uh, Vinnie Jones as the Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> and the manager, Peter Shilton, as Lovejoy. 
<laughs> that's good. I like that. Pure shortness love, Joe. That's excellent. We've just had a fact straight here from, from Huckleberry Hound's lawyer, though. <laughs> saying, no way. Is he, does he look like Terry Phelan? <laughs> Definition of character uh, yeah. to the highest extreme. All right, thanks so and, much. Uh, but, can I just mention yep. my friend, uh, Simon Fraser? He might be listening. He sends me the Celtic fanzines. Oh, yeah. That's so, very nice uh, of him. Just uh, like to thank him for doing that and maybe give him a mention. All right, God bless you, Simon, then. Thanks very much for sending the fanzines down to Tony. Thanks for calling in, Tony. Um, actually, while we're on the subject, we've got um, a little different uh, Sarah Coleman, another very regular correspondent. This is Footballers as Adverts. Uh, Weight Watchers. Any Paul guesses? Gascoigne. Well, close. Oh, Mickey Quinn. Mickey yeah, Quinn. Yeah. Hosting Pills. Barry Venison. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mr. Sheen. It's quite wide open, this one. Yeah, really. no, I've no idea. Ray Wilkins. <laughs> <laughs> Pampers. Um, well, we're being put on the spot here, aren't we? It's Pampers is Gaza. Is it? Right, okay. Somebody, it had to be someone with a large yeah. posterior, isn't it? too yes. clever for and me. The yeah. gold blend. The gold blend. Advert. Man. This is a difficult one. Got the it. clue is the couple in the gold blend ad get increasingly smug. Oh, go on, tell Every us who it is. Man United. Oh, right. See, that was the weakest <laughs> one, but the rest of them were quite good. That's yeah, it was good, yeah. Thanks very much for that. Also, quickly, the shortest letter I've ever received from James Green of Sheffield, it sort of borders on the Kafkaesque. It says, the latest FA Cup fifth round replay result, Arsenal, ball 10. Uh-huh. Yep. Which is pithy, I think. Um, yep. It makes, you wonder, it makes you wonder what they're teaching them in the schools, but they... <laughs> I know, but that's good. I like them. I like them short like that. <laughs> and I can't believe that's the shortest letter you've ever had, Dominic. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but you said, you said, Too many say, words. Dear Dominic, then two four-letter words yeah. from a Gunners fan. You know. Yeah. <laughs> right, we have Tommy Doherty on the line. Hello, Tommy. Hello. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Good, good, good. Listen, we've got a bit of a problem. What's that? And that we're both bidding for Nathan Blake. Oh, really? So How much money have you got? Um, oh, now listen, Tommy, you know that I'm never going to be able to compete with you in this sort of high spending stakes in the transfer market. Yeah, but, so your wife told me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but how, um, I don't think what the best way to do is, right, the, the smallest bid is 250,000, right. right, which we can do as a minimum. So, basically, we are, how far are you prepared to go, Tommy? I'm, uh, uh, I'm prepared to go as far as I can to get him. Right, what we'll do, so right... I want to save you money, I don't want you to get involved in the bidding at all because you'll lose. Right. <laughs> but I might have more money left than you, though, Tommy. Uh, well, you should do the way you spend it. <laughs> well, um, what we'll do, well, I'll tell you what, we'll do that. We'll say that, um, I'll, I'll give them to you, actually, Tommy, because I've only got about a million left. I accept. So you're spending all the rest of your money on yeah. Ethan Blake, so you can't buy any more players. That's right. That's fair. I hope he does the business for you, Tommy. Get better or I'll get sack again. <laughs> because you're only a handful of points ahead of me, remember? I know that. We are, we are involved in our bottom of the table. Okay, yeah, I... Unlike, unlike the Premier League, all the Scottish managers in the fantasy football, they've got the other end of it, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Apart from Pat Nevin, oh, though. Pat's doing well. Yeah, Pat's he's doing real well. <laughs> he's keeping the country side. <laughs> all right, then. So, so then that's official. Then Tommy is buying Nathan Blake for every penny he's got. Will it be on the phone to the Barclays Bank tomorrow, Tommy, yeah? Yep. <laughs> All right, thanks for calling up, Tommy. So thank you. All, All the best. best. Cheers, Cheers Tommy. That was good. That was very, very quick. I'm glad we got that sorted out. Apart the fact that I'm still stuck with Ronnie Rosenthal up oh, front. No, come on. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. It, it, at least you know that all the, all the, all the ball, I suppose, is going towards him because there's nobody else who's going to score. <laughs> well, that's, that's true. Yeah. I've actually well. seen Nathan Blake this year against the wonderful Bristol Rovers. and uh -huh. he, I think he's a good footballer. I think he may well hack it in the Premier League. Well, I saw the goal he took um, when he came on as a sub the other week yeah. and I thought it was a magnificent yeah. goal. No nerves. No nerves. Just yeah. And if you're good against Bristol Rovers, you've got to be a hell of a player. Exactly. Right. Half of Bristol's laughing now, my <laughs> <laughs> not the Rovers fan. Right, Dickie from Cornwall. Hello, Dickie. Good morning, Dominic. How are you? Oh, not too well. Bit nervous. Got uh, Chelsea playing this afternoon. It's been a long time since we was this close. Yeah, that's true. It has to be. What I was finding up about is, is these United, um, and I put supporters in brackets, like, you know, because I don't know where they were in the 70s when they were going down and that. <laughs> yeah. But th this thing with Schmeichel yesterday, I mm. mean, I don't think there was any doubt about the hand ball, and, and the tackle alone is probably, it was on a par with the one Schumacher did against a Frenchman in the World Cup <laughs> eight years ago. Well, th this is the point, you know what I mean? I, I mean, mean it was horrendous, wasn't he? Had both feet up, all the studs were showing. I mean, can you imagine that coming in? He's not exactly small, is he? I know. It's a Type of tackle that only Bosnich could get away with, you know. <laughs> oh, I don't know. See the Bosnich one. I thought it was. I thought you know it, it wasn't that bad because he had his back to the guy. You know, yeah. gone for the ball when he turned over. He had his back to the guy. Oh, his arm was out. But that was fifty-fifty. But that one yesterday, that was that was terrible. Yeah. You know, the guy should have walked for the tackle. I think the hand ball was immaterial. You think you should be suspended twice then? That'd please better Alex Ferguson, wouldn't it? I don't think anything would please him. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Chelsea are going to go on this afternoon, Diggy. 
Um, I don't know. They're giving me a lot of pleasure the way they're playing at the minute. I yeah, mean, I've, we've got I've, Glenn Oddle. I yeah. can't think of anybody I'd rather have as a manager for a club like that. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been down to Stamford Bridge a couple of times this season because it's basically the nearest club to me. <laughs> and, I uh, wish it was the nearest one to me. And, <laughs> um, and they all got, got of course, down in Cornwall. And yeah. I must admit, I mean, they, they do play good, especially when Wise is playing as well. They He's do got play. to pass it on the ground, like, you know, yeah. and, and you, you got to go with that. I mean, I'm delighted we got this far in the cup. I mean, it's a long time since yeah. we've had any success. How these guys can moan because they've won 3-1. All he's been sent off. I mean, I and they're in the semi-final of the cup. What an achievement! I, I mean, anybody else, you know, they, the tongue would be hanging out for it. Yeah. Well, I I mean, I'm going to be there this afternoon. I'm going to fishing this afternoon. I'll listen to it on my radio because I couldn't stand the thought of sitting in my front room and everybody taking a mickey if we lose. <laughs> so I got the option then, like, you know, I might, a I might catch a fish and b I can jump in like if it's a free nil job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks very much for that, Diggy. All the best. I would like to point out actually because I did mention I went to see Chelsea the other weekend. I got all these letters that were slagging me off for being a Chelsea fan. I'm not a Chelsea. Fan. I would never support it. I, I, I don't quite like watching Chelsea play at the Renier's club, but I never support the same thing that Mellor does. And I think <laughs> that this is the unfortunate problem that Chelsea have. Do you know what I mean? And that's kind of ruined it. Can I just say, Dominic, I, I yeah. did actually see a game yesterday that involved two controversial penalties. Oh, let's uh, hear about it. Well, I did. It's like the Gloucestershire Senior Cup. In, mm -hmm. the, in, in Bristol, yes. I'm, I've been threatened if I don't mention this by the boys in my local, I'm going to go back and I'm gonna be dead tonight. <laughs> so it the whole programme's not been given over to you. Exactly. Your personal <laughs> personal <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had your baby, now it's yeah, your baby. Yeah, that's right. Bristol yeah. Mafia. Well, well, yeah. so was Stoke Gifford right. against Shaftesbury in the semi final. Uh -huh. right? And um, Shaftesbury had a penalty after our goalkeeper Coops brought yep. the guy down for no apparent reason. Mm -hmm. It's a double save. Yep. And there was another penalty later on, and our boys scored it. So, so they got through? We got through 2-0, and then the other goal, I'm, I've got to say this, uh, a rear header from Darren Willits, following across by Dunty. From <laughs> Dunty? <laughs> the ubiquitous Dunty. And that's going to cost him a pint. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, that was uh, is that on the front page of the Times as well? It is that on the little one? Papers all it really page, should yeah. be, Underneath you know. that Schmeichel photograph. No, <laughs> I, 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 got... I have scaled the papers for news of the Gloucester Senior Cup, and yeah. sadly... <laughs> you haven't got... Well, that's a disgrace, isn't it? Dunty yeah. does it, as the headline. Yeah, well, you've got the News of the world there, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> does he does it? Oh no, he don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, I think it's about time to move into Scotch Corner now. Let's hear from Graham from York. Hi. Hi, Graham, how are you doing? I'm fine, thanks, how are you? Good, very well. What have you got for us? Well, I've got a jock in England 11. Oh, there, that's quite interesting. Let's well, an Anglo 11. Um, before that, I've got something else. Yeah. Last week, you had someone who lived in Middlesbrough phoning yeah. up complaining about being taunted at a Celtic That's right, match. when you went to see Celtic, they were taunted because they well, were English. Well, I go to an English school and I've sort of got it 50 weeks a year. Yeah. Instead of just every... I mean, it's... It's not funny anymore. I mean, people have been doing it for years. Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, I mean, anybody that complains about, you know, English people yeah. taking a mick out of Scottish people and vice versa, I mean, I think it's it's part and parcel. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And it, it seems that the, the thicker the person is, the more the taunting comes. Yeah. And it's just, I think it's just because English are never forgiven the Scottish for inventing everything. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the problem. Maybe it's saying something about the mentality of Celtic supporters, but never mind. Uh, no, I don't think so, Graham. Yeah. His dad is practising to be whining about football teams when he's a bit older, isn't he? <laughs> Whining about school. <laughs> it's an apprenticeship, isn't it? Let's see your eleven then, Graham. Okay, right, I've got Brian Gunn of Norwich in goal. Mm -hmm. Defence, I've got Steve Nicholl, John Walk, Colin yep. Hedry, mm -hmm. and Dominic Matteo. Yep. Midfield, Don Hutchinson, mm -hmm. Gary McAllister, mm -hmm. Brian McClare, and Gordon Strachan. Yep. Up front, John McGinley and Pat Nevin. I've got some reserves as well. Yep. Kevin Gallagher, um, mm -hmm. Graham Sharp. John, yep. John Spencer, mm -hmm. Paul Bernard, and um, that Norwich reserve keeper. I was wondering whether you were going to actually have McGinley in there, because I know Craig Brown went to see him yesterday. Yeah, he did. At uh, the Cup game. Do you think you'll be in his, uh, in his team, in his squad um, announced tomorrow? He might be in the squad, but I don't think he'll be in the team with... Um, Jury and McCoy and Ferguson there. I don't think he's good enough. Well, it's good. Jury's always good, you know, to sort of dive in the box and get yeah. other people sent off. He's but always uh, quite and good. And he's always, for that. you can always organise a sweepstake with your mates, Graham, at school, uh, how long he will last before the trainer has to come on to him. Did I get Dominic Matteo in that team, by the way? Yeah. I don't think he's English, isn't he? Uh, he's, he's, he can't play for Scotland now because he, he is Scottish, but he chose to play for England under 21, so we can't have him now, Graham. Oh, no, no. Right. So we'll bring on Spencer. Yeah. Oh, Spencer can't play in defence, can he? Actually, that, that's, that's a, that, that, it, it is an old thing, though. I think any time in the last 20 years until now, if you'd named an English, you know, Scottish Anglos team, they would have been the, the maybe 11 of the 30 best players in the country. And that isn't as strong as that, is it? I mean, that's, no, that not. just shows the drift back to Scotland yeah. of the best players, you know? That's they're, they're all at Rangers and Aberdeen. All the best players and Gordon Jury. Yeah, all the <laughs> best players and Gordon Jury. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go. Brian from Erskine. Hello, Dominic. How are you doing? I'm all right yourself, Brian. Not bad. Good. Uh, just following out about the, the Huns banning us from Ibrox. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a total disgrace. I, uh -huh. don't, know, I don't know if he's realised down, down south that 
One of the major reasons why Rangers are banning Celtic supporters is not because of the alleged vandalism. Is the, va the vandalism, I don't, I don't condone vandalism by any means, but certainly uh, it's been going on apparently for years. Mm -hmm. now, how come it's only the last time, the, 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 last, the last visit to Ibrox that we've actually seen any evidence of broken seats? I know. Uh, Rangers at the moment have just closed off half of their enclosure at Ibrox. They're, they're seating that. Yeah. And the, 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 the enclosure at Ibrox has, uh, is full of season ticket holders. Mm hmm and I think that David Murray has just used a ploy to relocate his supporters, quite rightly so, <laughs> you know, because they've paid their money up front yeah, for their yeah. tickets, and, and obviously that's a big game that fans want to see. And I think it's just a total disgrace that uh, the way they're treating the Scottish League way with contempt, you know? I, th I, I think it's all a bit silly. I mean, we're talking about, I can't remember the figures, 7,000 or something like that, 7,000 pounds they want Celtic to yeah, pay? Yeah, that was 8,500 8 pounds they wanted. It's like, that's, you know, that's Ali McCoy's hair gel, do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I... It's like, um, I mean, I don't know, I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe Fergus should just pay it, do you know what I mean, and just, you know, rather than getting yeah, this thing I, I, dragging I don't, on. Yeah, I think, I think it should be paid, I mean, I'm not condoning, I'm not condoning vandalism, and yeah. also another thing that Celtic fans have had to pay a pound levy on their seats in the past as well, you know, that, right, yeah. that goes towards it, you know, so I mean, he's wanting his cake and he's wanting to eat it as well, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I think he's justified, and you know, if if there is this, if there is the vandalism, and then you know, and he knows the Celtic yeah. fans are are responsible, then fair enough, he can ask for the money. But I but think he asks he asks for the money, and then that's it. I don't yeah. think he bans the players. Also, bans there's, the, also yeah, there's, there's, there's been a lot of vandalism at Celtic Park. You know? Oh yeah, in the last cup final, the the jungle which had just been reseated. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of broken seats there, That's there's right. been toilets have been vandalised. Yeah. I mean, this thing's been going on for years at both grounds, yeah. and it's been some sort of uh, unwritten law that the clubs just accept it, rather than sort of making a big a big issue over it, you know, yeah. I mean, it's just one of these unfortunate things that happens in the game today in the society that we're living in. Yeah. But uh, I, I think it's just, I've just been over the top with the whole situation, you know, David Murray has anyway, yeah. you know, and as I say, I don't condone, and it's obviously it's a minority of supporters that are doing the vandalism, yeah. you know. I, th I think the problem was, was that um, because of, of everything that was happening behind the scenes at Celtic, David Murray hadn't been on the back page of the Daily Record for a while, so... Uh, also as well, I mean, the fact that it was the first time that Celtic Rangers had been beaten for about a year. Exactly, yeah. The last minute goal, I mean, there was no, there was, when they beat us in the Cup 1-0 in the semi-final at Ibrox, there was no vandalism there when we got beat. Right. You'd be thinking there'd be more vandalism when you get beat. I know, No when you win, you know, I mean, it was... Maybe Ali, maybe you should get Ali Maxwell to pay the money. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Another thing as well, Tommy, just quickly, how come is it before every old film game there's always some sort of plague at Ibrox? Mm -hmm. Do you know, I mean, in the past we've had... Uh, Richard Goff is doubtful or he's never going to make it in time or Alan McCoy is never going to make it in time yeah. or even any big game that Rangers have got yesterday that uh, Stuart McCall won he was, he was no fact he wasn't going to make it yeah. did the Huns get the lures before having a big game that they've got to get <laughs> an injury crisis sort of out of that <laughs> that's, that's a good point I have to be careful I say I think we, we, we get people every time I say Huns I get people com complaining about oh, it's using... brilliant they're, they're just Huns anyway aren't they? I mean, <laughs> let's be honest right okay. I think we'll leave it there then right, 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 cheers Brian right, all the best Okay, right, um, just before we go into the news there, I've just got to make a quick phone call. Um, I think we're going to, um, we're going to try and get... Okay, we're going through now, that's good. Um, you know what today is? Hello, Paul Dan speaking. Hi, Mum, it's Dominic here. Pardon? Hey, Mum, it's Dominic here. <laughs> that's not funny, Dominic. No, it's because, I'm sorry, I forgot to send you a card. When was he last funny? Come on. And I forgot... <laughs> I forgot to send you a card and I didn't even send you any flowers, so I'm That's just saying... That's unusual, Dominic. Give so, me <laughs> so I've just said I'm sorry. I just thought I'd like to wish you a very happy Mother's Day. That's very, very sweet of you, Dominic. Okay. And what, what do you think of that Schmeichel getting sent off yesterday, Mum? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> All right, listen, happy Mother's Day, Mum, okay? Thank you very much. And I hope you have a, a lovely day. Well, I will, Dominic, you know, but it's nice to get a nice little card, but thank you very much. All the cards in the post, Mum, you know it is. Yes, dear. Okay. All right. Talk. Okay, take care. Right. Bye. 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 Oh, that's all right then. I think. Oh, I think that's me. Am I that, in the that, good fix now? That went really well, didn't it? I thought. <laughs> Britain's most embarrassed woman, and not for that reason, to be fair. But it's the thing. See, I've any, anything. You know, I come on every week and everything. And like, if I if I try to say, you know, I get into trouble for like using foul language and everything <laughs> like that. And I've just blown that now. Do you know what I mean? I've yeah. you know. But I mean, it's, it's okay for you because if you forget a card, you're on a national radio station. You can apologise for it. <laughs> that's true. It's like cheating a bit. If I thought my mum could hear us in Ireland right now, I'd I, I'd say the same thing. But I don't think if Radio Five gets that far. <laughs> Just in case it does, happy uh, happy your Mother's Day, Mum. And uh, Rick, anyone you want to wish out your Mother's Day to? Yes, my mother. I didn't send her a card either, so happy <laughs> Mother's Day, Mum. Anyone, uh, anyone in the in the gallery out there? Anyone? Forgotten? Come on. To Tony wants to say happy Mother's Day to Doris. Anyone else? <laughs> no, everyone else has remembered the cards. That's all right. Jonathan on the phones. Jonathan, have you have you sent your mum Mother's Day? Dinah, all right. Happy Mother's Day to Dinah as well. <laughs> 
OK, right, we'll just come out to the news now. Coming up in the second half, Arsenal O'Connor, as always, a couple of complaints about using the toilet flush on that. Um, so um, we might have something a bit different for that this week. Arsenal O'Connor and a brand new thing, The Amazing Adventures of Alan Hansen, a new BBC drama production coming up in the second half of the show. We'll be back after the news. and 693 AM with sports news every hour. This is BBC Radio 5. With the Radio 5 News and Sport, here's Lucy Bonner and Simon Mann. There's been another mortar attack on Heathrow Airport, the third in the past five days. A senior police officer has confirmed that five tubes used to launch mortars have been found in a second-hand car yard near the southwest perimeter fence. BBC Radio 5. Ragamuffins in the dock, but this is like no court case you've ever heard before. In a cold and grey Babylon morning, another little Ragamuffin child is born. Ragamuffin is no ordinary person. Ragamuffin stands for black people in towns and cities everywhere. Ha ha, may have some wicked lyrics. Ooh, because counselor and defense. Both are you not worth 15 pence on the Ragamuffin, the reggae musical, comes to Radio 5 tonight, 8.30. Fantasy Football League. Wow, I can't wait for that one, I tell you. I'm going to switch over from Songs of Praise for that, I think, tonight. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the show. Rick Johansson and Danny Kelly are with me, but with a time coming up to six minutes past twelve, it's time for this week's Arsenal Corner. I don't know if I prefer the toilet flushing, actually. It's not, I quite like this story, it's quite good. Right, OK, two quick letters from Arsenal Corner this week. Um, this is from Peter Wright from Bury St Edmunds. I am very concerned and quite frankly you disappoint me, Dominic. The hatred you displayed towards Arsenal on Sunday's show was pathetic and very worrying. Apart from the idea that Lee Dixon's own goal was more amusing than Eddie Yowd's, your vitriol was almost non-existent. In fact, it depresses me to mention that you even praised the club on more than one occasion. Don't you understand that the real pleasure of being an Arsenal fan is that we're hated by everyone, especially when we're winning championships and cups? As our number one hater, I insist you return to poking greater fun at the club, so hopefully turning more people against us, thus providing gooners across the country with the last laugh. And he has a PS, which Danny will appreciate. Um, oh, God. It's a, a variation on that classic Spurs FA Cup song. He's put PS... Oh, he's on his way to Ensley. <laughs> <laughs> and Enfield. <laughs> which, was, which was great. That's uh, from Peter right? Also, from um, someone who signed off as the Mad Welshman from Swansea. Uh, after listening to the show last Sunday, I felt compelled to let you know what's happened to Martin Hayes. Now, if you remember, uh, last week a caller suggested my hatred of Arsenal was as a result of them offloading Martin Hayes to Celtic for £650,000. Now, Christopher says his team, Swansea, picked him up on a free from Celtic last season. He's had a few injuries, but rest assured, when he plays, he's still not much cop. Thanks very much to the Mad West for Swansea for clearing up the big Martin Hayes mystery. Right, Bernie from Norwich. Hello. Hi, Bernie. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Good, good. What have you got for us? Um, read the new Arsenal shirt. Oh, yeah, that funny one. It's sort of, it's weird. The sort of arms go inside out halfway down and everything <laughs> like that. Uh, well, it's got Arsenal written across the tail of the shirt. So when it's hanging out, it's hanging over the player's bum. Yeah. So they're, they're wandering around proving they're a load of... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, quite. We'll cut that one. <laughs> Too early for the use of the word bum, I think. Really, really. <laughs> and, th and that's it, um, Bernie. Well, the, the, other point, the other point I was uh, going to make was about the Daily Express report yesterday about uh, Robert Chase talking to Alan Sugar at a, a, a chairman's meeting. Surely um, he talked that uh, Alan Sugar probably spoke to all 21 other um, chairmen <laughs> there, so why isn't there a report that he's going to buy a player from every team? They'd probably be better than Tottenham are at the moment anyway. So. Mm -hmm. Danny, we've got to let you come back on that one. No, I, I'm quite happy for Norwich City sports to sit there taking the mick out of poor old Alan Sugar, as long as the traffic along the, uh, whatever M it is, uh, from between Norwich <laughs> happens before the transfer deadline. I couldn't care less. You know that Norwich, you know that, that Chase is going to sell that, sell that centre forward sooner or later. It might as well be to us, yeah? Yes, yeah, yeah, Danny, he won't <laughs> sell him until after the end of the season because of tax purposes. So, uh, He's so already got the two million from Fox. Think... He, he can't afford to get the four million from... Uh, That's right, you'll have to I'm move sure, to the Isle of Man. I'm sure he'll get the best possible tax advice from Alan Sugar, I can assure you. <laughs> I, suppose <laughs> any, I suppose any ever buy Dutch <laughs> Swindon players anyway, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks very much, Benny. All right, that was this week's Arsenal Corner.
BBC Drama Productions present The Amazing Adventures of Alan Hansen, starring Sean Connery as Alan Hansen and Tony Adams as himself. This week, Alan goes to the beach. Today, the she was magnificent. If you're going to play a flat back beach against the she, you have to stick to your zones. Here we see the she coming in from the left. Look at that pebble on the right. He's drifted across, leaving a huge gap in the sand, and he pays the price. Really, if the beach comes on playing like that, they're going to struggle. Your thoughts, Tony? Next week, Alan goes to the shops. I'm not sure about that one, actually, if that was funny or not. And, um, I'll, have to, uh, I'll have to listen to the tape afterwards of the show, actually. And we might have, we might have more of the amazing adventures of Alan Hansen next week. If, um, <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to struggle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it sounded more like Alan Hansen was played by Bill, Bill McLaren, McLaren, though, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Probably a bit more than, than Sean Connery. Maybe there's going to be a cast change for next week. Scottish, <laughs> Scottish accent problem there, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah. <laughs> You should have heard it when it was Alan Hansen, played by Alan Hansen. Then it was, <laughs> that was when it was really bad. Right, we have Dave from Basildon on the line. Dave. How do you like, Dominic? I'm all right. How are you doing, mate? Oh, my luck's terrible. Is it, we haven't heard from you for a couple of weeks. No, oh, um, sorry about that. That's all right. Well, I'll, t I'll tell you how bad the luck is, Dominic. How I've bad? got a letter this week from Reader's Digest, and it said your numbers haven't been put into our weekly draw. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I'll tell you how bad it is, I paid £3 million for Staunton, and he's got me about 13 points. Is that bad or what? He's paid three million for Staunton? Yeah. Oh, he's always bad. injured, isn't he? Yeah. That's what's to me buying Ronnie, Ronnie Rosenthal. <laughs> How much did you pay for Ronnie Rosenthal? I missed that. Oh, only 250,000, no, though. Same as us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I've got for you, Dominic, is a yep. um, couple of points. Uh -huh. First, got some songs for teams and players. Yep. Um, <laughs> One for your Celtic fans, uh -huh. I thought they could recall the old Three Degrees song and dedicate it to the Scottish League Championship trophy. When will I see you again? <laughs> yes, yeah, very and, droll, Dave. Um, Paul Ince could do the old Peters and Lee number, Welcome Home. <laughs> or even Craig McLaughlin's version of Mona. <laughs> yeah. um, Terry Venables and Aaron Sugar, uh, We Don't Talk Anymore, the old Cliff Richard Oh, yeah. Um, Mark Bosnich could do Kylie's song, I Should Be So Lucky. <laughs> And the South End fans could dedicate to Barry Fry the Gladys Knight song, Come Back and Finish What You Started. Yeah. And the Brum fans could do for Barry Fry the Beatles, One of Get Back. <laughs> and Barry Fry himself could do the Steve Miller band, Take the Money and Run. Incredible musical taste. That's and, um, <laughs> have you got all these records, Dave? Oh, definitely, yeah. All on the Mega Mix. <laughs> yeah, 12 inch version. It yeah. was, it's fantastic, Dave. You've only missed one trick, actually. That's uh, the B side of the Celtic fans' version of When Will I See You Again, dedicated to the Scottish uh, Championship Trophy, could be in the year 2525. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it. Good one. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dominic. Dave. Dominic? Yeah. Um, you know, last week we had a caller who was saying about the funny things that women say. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I overheard two women in our place talking, and they were saying, if your husband's such a good player, how comes he's only a half-back and not a full-back? <laughs> And that's a true story, that's Dave, it. isn't it? It's really, really true. <laughs> I was that soldier. Yeah. And do you know Grant Taylor's England this week? They was all saying about, oh, he's got it right, and the tactics were brilliant, you know. And um, Graham Taylor's England. I'm sorry, Venables. Yeah. <laughs> Venables Wishful thinking there, Dave. I'm still, <laughs> still in the time war. Yeah. Um, anyway. I'm saying that Venables has got it right with the tactics and that. Yeah. Well, it was easy with Taylor, wasn't it? Because he thought the tactics was those little white mints. <laughs> so it's got to be an improvement, hasn't it? <laughs> Somebody else, please phone in. <laughs> please, Thanks. please. Thanks very much, Dave. Listen, Dave, we'll speak to you next week at the same time. <laughs> all right, all the best, Dave. Like Dave's corner. <laughs> right, Steve from Kettering. Steve. Hi. Hi, how are you? Bye, thanks. Good, good. What have you got for us? Uh, this is sort of a late addition to Arsenal Corner. Uh-huh. I thought, thought this had to be shared. Oh, we've just changed... Danny suggested we're just going to change the name because we've got Scottish Corner and Arsenal Corner. Arsenal Alcove. Danny suggested. Yeah. He's obviously, he's a home-loving type of boy, do you know what I mean? He's a DIY Danny, that's what it is. So, a late, Alcove update. A late edition, yeah. Arsenal Alcove update, let's hear it. Okay, right. Uh, local paper, the Evening Telegraph, mm -hmm. in Kettering, yeah. has got an advert for uh, a local Tempin Bowling Centre. Yeah. And they've got pictures of Tempin Bowls at the top, and then just underneath they've got a big headline saying, Imagine their Arsenal. And then saying, a little wishful thinking can improve your bowling no end. And unlike 90 minutes at Highbury, there's nothing remotely boring, boring about it. 
I thought that had to be shared. <laughs> that is absolutely yeah. brilliant. Can you send us a copy of this? Yeah. Oh, well, indeed, the, yeah. we, got a, we must have a fax number here. Can you send us before the end of the show? But probably not. I don't know. That would be great. Well, we'll, put, yeah. we'll put it up on the wall. Oh, and of course you haven't, yeah. Next yeah. to that picture <laughs> of Schmeichel. We'll put it up next to Schmeichel. Next to the, the Times. Superb. Okay, <laughs> this program has actually recorded, so you can't fax it at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Thanks very much for that one, Steve. Bye. All the best. John of York. John? Hello, Dominic. Hi, John. All right, what have you got? I'm just ringing up about what was Don Howe wearing on his head on Wednesday night? Good question. Uh, he had a fantastic... He, he, remember Maxwell Smart? Yeah. He yeah. had the same raincoat and trilby arrangement as Maxwell Smart in Get Smart, didn't he? It, it, was, it was amazing. It didn't <laughs> seem to fit him, though. No, it was a jaunty angle. It I was. Think, I, think after, I think after all those uh, years of watching the, 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 the Taylor team, uh, it happened at a particularly jaunty angle. That's all it was. <laughs> Well, how about Brian Robson as well? I mean, what did he actually do on Wednesday night apart from sit with his arms folded? I think he sat with his arms folded. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's his kind of job. Yeah. He's I mean, in charge least, of sitting with his arms folded. At least Phil Neal used to be there. He used to sort of shout out and say, yes, boss. Well, that's right, yeah. I didn't see Brian Robson doing that. that. I didn't see No, he did. didn't. He seemed to be doing a lot of that. I, I suppose, that given his, his his career path, when Ince was too far from the referee to complain, Robson might have been complaining <laughs> off camera <laughs> to the referee about some decisions. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's why he had his arms folded, because he had a tiny pair of speakers so the referee could hear <laughs> them, and he was yeah. just trying to hide them. That was what it was. Well, the other thing, Dominic, is yeah. have you actually seen the new Yellow Pages advert yet? Yes, I have. Yeah. It's a serious case of pass me the bucket. I think it's I think it's it's very very clever the yellow pages, but I think that what everybody says said, oh, isn't that a very very funny advert? And people forget that Graham Taylor is making a lot of money out of being a bumbling useless idiot. You know, and that's basically it. And people well, have I mean, we've paid him for that. years. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But I think people people forget that that he is benefiting financially from England's inability to get to the World Absolutely. Cup. Absolutely, the guys the guys uh, allegedly got yeah. twenty grand for this advert, and he's completely wrecked the summer for an awful lot of people. He's really made yours, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> God, if you're going to cover it, there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, at least if we were still England manager, you wouldn't have to put him up, put up with him on TV and adverts. <laughs> no, that's true. That's a good point. Dominic would love to have him back as England manager. That would be great. I'd love to have him as Scottish manager. <laughs> at, least I would, at least I would know what a Scottish manager looked like then. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, thanks very much, John. Cheers, Dominic. Okay, um, this week's... This week's terrible sport rate, everybody remember, this was this time, remember this time? More yeah. than that time, yeah. what, what year was that? Which one was that for 82, now? 82, 86. 82. It was 82, was it? Nobody can remember what the 86 World Cup song was. Can you remember what no, it was? No, 1990 sorry. was New Order. Yeah. This was 1982, nobody can remember what 1986 was. No. Nope. That's why there was no song. They didn't go, did they? <laughs> Good trick question, though. This is quite a good song, isn't it? Oh, it's There's been worse than this, hasn't there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cleo Fleming. Was that? Was worse, from Bath this week. I sent in a cutting from the Bath Evening Chronicle about this kid, Jared Blythe, who started his own fantasy football league at Culvery School in Bath. Now, I hope this is an official one, actually, otherwise Mr. Weinstein's lawyers will be in touch. But anyway, it says in the cutting, and I quote, the idea of fantasy football, which originates from Radio 3, uh -huh. and uh, Cleo says that Terry Conroy's legs, God bless Lou McCarry, etc., would be a bit of a culture shock for the incredibly wild and adventurous Radio 3 audience. Um, I thought perhaps you could have a, a fantasy composer's league. Um, three, three points if you stay awake during Beethoven. You know. And, and, and who, who, what pieces are being selected to be played at the proms each year? <laughs> exactly. It'd be slow movingly, <laughs> but incredibly cultural. <laughs> um, Cleo also says, P.S. Arsenal fans who have nothing better to do than whinge about you every week in their cr fanzine now just proving what seriously sad lives they lead. Please continue to slag them off every opportunity. P.P.S. That Norwich supporter a few weeks back was speaking for himself only. I know no one else who would ever switch off such a truly brilliant programme. Sorry, that was a bit of a meller there, but uh, thanks very much for that anyway. <laughs> yeah. And I'll let you wrote two letters actually this week, Cleo, and this is, uh, should be a particular interest to Rick here. Hmm. It says, on your lady special, you and your guests often said how women have a serious interest in football and didn't just go to the matches to ogle the men. All I can say to that is, what a boring lot you are. That is the only reason I go. The single reason I support Bristol Rovers is because they have several extremely sexy young players. She mentions the following, Marcus Stewart, Martin Paul, Lee Archer, Mike Davis and Marcus Law. And she says she wouldn't go to see Bristol Rovers if they were ugly. And she also adds to the Ryan Giggs hunk or not debate they've been running by saying she thinks Ryan Giggs is ugly because his ears stick out and he has psycho eyes. 
So what about this Bristol Rovers? Are they a, a fine bevy of young lads? Well, the names you just uh, read out to us there, Dominic, I think all by one of reserve team players. Uh, well... <laughs> the first, first team do look seriously ugly when I look at the team in the paper today, I must admit. She actually did put in the letter, please could you give her a mention, because they're never going to be mentioned for anything they do on the pitch. Do well, I always oh. mention Bristol Rovers, I'm on. <laughs> I, I don't want to mention them now, because we got beat again yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it yesterday? Oh, thanks for asking, Dominic. Rotherham yesterday. Very good side, Rotherham. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> so where are Bristol Rovers now then? Oh, we're still right up still there. Still just at the end of the uh, seven yeah, bridge. <laughs> 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 well, we're actually in both bars. Yeah, we're fifth. Oh, we're oh, fifth. oh actually, room. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, so that's we're nice. We're fifth. <laughs> 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 All right, let's go to <laughs> Dean from Bristol. Hello. Hi, Dean. How are you doing? Not too bad, Dominic. Where about you live in Bristol? I don't actually live in Bristol. I live in Swindon. Oh, you live in Swindon? Yeah, but I work in Bristol. All oh, right. Yeah, what I'm fine oh, up we'll, about. We'll close that avenue then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What I'm fine up about is uh, Swindon's great season so far. Yes, yes. And how Sterling. proud I am to be a Swindon Town supporter. <laughs> it's just so good. <laughs> we were just we were talking before the show. But John about Gorman honestly believes you are having a great season. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking me. about who, who's the most insane manager. Is it Alex <laughs> Ferguson or is it John Gorman? It's got to be John Gorman. <laughs> He's the man of excuses. <laughs> so many excuses. Well, after he'd been slaughtered at Everton on telly the other week, and Everton had clattered the woodwork as well yeah. numerous times, he was saying, we've played some marvellous football this year, and I know what your show on Matter the Day tonight. I? <laughs> your show is getting slaughtered. We're just so unlucky, and all the referees are against us as well. <laughs> it's just sickening. <laughs> why, also, why, how comes no one has got a Swindon Town player in their fantasy football league team?